Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today at the Northern Alberta Institute of Technology here in Edmonton. My name is Matt Lindbergh. I am the Dean of, the, of Nate's School of Skilled Trades, as well as a member of the Alberta Board of Skilled Trades. It's my pleasure to emcee today's event. Before we begin, I would like to do a brief land acknowledgement. At Nate, we honor and acknowledge that the land on which we learn, work, and live is Treaty 6 territory. We seek to learn from the history and lessons that have come before us and draw on the wisdom of the First Peoples of Canada. Only through learning can we move forward in truth and reconciliation and to a better future together. We do have a tight program this morning, so I'll invite the Minister of Children's Services, the, Hon the Honourable Mickey Amory, to the podium to make an important announcement. Thank you very much, uh, Dean Lindbergh, and hello everyone. I am uh, very pleased to join you alongside with my colleague and dear friend, uh, the Honorable Casey Madhu, Deputy Premier and Minister of Skilled Trades and Professions, to talk about one of the many ways Budget 2023 is securing Alberta's future. As Minister of Children's Services and as a very proud parent to three young children myself, I understand how much that future depends on how well we support and empower our young people today. My government colleagues and I are committed to investing in their success because to invest in them is to invest in the greater prosperity for our province. Of course, we know that some young people face barriers in life, in work, and in their education. When that happens, I believe it is incumbent upon all of us to remove those barriers so that they can reach their full potential. Youth often face unique obstacles when they are transitioning out of government care. It can be a challenging transition for everyone, even with the benefits of support, advice, and connections from their families. Youth who were formerly in government care have to live independently pursue post-secondary education and build their careers without many of the advantages that their peers take for granted. On top of that, they are also at higher risk for experiencing trauma, mental health challenges, homelessness, and discrimination. And that's why my ministry launched the Transition to Adulthood Program, which we refer to as TAP to offer more specialized, coordinated, and consistent services and supports for young adults who were formerly in the care of children's services, which helps them move from government care to successful, independent lives. TAP was designed to be customizable. The experience is a little different for each participant, depending on their individual needs and the life path that they want to take. TAP participants receive emotional, social and employment supports. They receive access to mentoring and counseling, and as well as funding to help them pursue their post-secondary goals. As you can imagine, this is a life-changing program for youth in care, and I'm incredibly grateful that Budget 2023 includes $25.6 million over the next three years to help more youth and young adults make a smooth transition out of care. Today we want to put a spotlight on the way that TAP can help talented, young, ambitious people. You, young people like Amelia, who we'll, we'll hear from in a few minutes, launch fulfilling careers and chase their dreams on their own terms. I had the pleasure of trying my first weld just a few minutes ago with Amelia, and I can tell you that I'm nowhere near as good as I thought I was. We at Children's Services are working with the dedicated folks at the Ministry of Skilled Trades and Professions to offer something new, a game-changing partnership that will enhance the employment and training supports within TAP and help level the playing field. I am so proud to be part of a government that is doing all that it can to open doors that should have never been closed to begin with. We know that TAP is already making a world of difference, and we've heard from participants and from the child and youth advocate that more supports are needed. I'm confident that through budget 2023, we are meeting that need. 
I look forward to hearing from Minister Madhu as he shares more details from about this initiative and what it will look like. And I can't wait to hear from Amelia and her foster mom, Pat. They all have amazing stories to share. Thank you very much. Thank you, Minister. This is wonderful news. I would now like to invite the Minister of Skilled Trades and Professions, Casey Madhu, to the podium to share a few words. Uh, thank you, Dean Lindberg. And I am indeed very pleased to be here with my colleague, the Honorable Mickey Emery, uh, Minister of Children's Services. I want to thank Nate for welcoming us to their South Campus. I do also want to echo Minister Emirich's thanks to Emilia and her mom, Path, for being here as well. Uh, we have had a great deal of good news to share lately, and we are grateful to President Gunter as well as the entire Nate leadership and their staff uh, for allowing us to be here at their campus uh, to share our work with our burdens and see firsthand how our funding is being put to work. It is my pleasure uh, to uh, be here on behalf of Premier Smith, as I said before with my colleague, Minister Emery, to share in this exciting announcement that he has just announced. Skilled Trades and Professions recognizes the importance of supporting the TAP program, and we are very pleased to announce an additional $2.5 million in investment to the program through my ministry. This funding will be used to provide young people transitioning out of care with access to apprenticeship education opportunities, allowing them to train for rewarding careers in the skilled trades. Apprenticeship education is a key that can open so many different doors. Alberta currently has apprenticeship education programs in 47 different designated trades, and they offer an incredible range of possibilities for well-paying jobs and personal fulfillment. Uh, for a young person who has been in care, knowing they will be able to find work and make a good living, to support themselves and their families is incredibly important to them and to us as a society. We need to build our talent pipeline to, so Alberta remains a, a national leader in economic growth that can continue to meet the needs of industry and our economy. So apprenticeship education plays an important role in expanding this pipeline with a skilled trade supporting nearly every aspect of industry in so many ways. It's a perfect match. This funding will provide young adults with opportunities to develop the skills they need to be successful and build rewarding careers. And it would help us ensure employers have access to the skilled workers they need to build or grow their businesses. I had the opportunity today before the announcement to meet our guests and hear their inspirational stories. Speaking with them is a poignant reminder for me that every dollar we invest in programs like TAP helps Albertans achieve their dreams and build successful careers and lives. Investing in the promise of Alberta's young people supports the development of a skilled labor force that will ensure Alberta continues to drive the economy of this country. We are grateful for the vision and leadership of our post-secondary institutions like Nate for working with us and Alberta's industry to prepare the students of today for Alberta of tomorrow. Well, thank you so much for having us. Thank you very much, Minister Madhu. It is my pleasure to introduce Amelia St. Pierre, former TAP recipient and recent Nate Welding Apprenticeship graduate, to speak next. Oh, Jesus. 
Thank you, Dean Lindenberg, for that introduction. It is an honor to be here today to share some of my story as a former youth who transitioned out of care to pursue a successful career in the trades and how funding like this will help others just like me. My passion for welding started in grade eight shop class. The very first time I picked up the torch, I immediately fell in love with the trade and I wanted to learn more. I was accept, oh, sorry. I love to create and design things and I enjoy working with my hands. I like the satisfaction, satisfaction of looking at a completed project and ensuring it looks good and knowing that I played a key part in that. When I applied for funding through Advancing Futures program, which is a part of TAP, I had to fill out an essay about why I wanted to pursue the career in the trades and filling out that application helped me realize just how much I wanted to be a welder and my application through Advancing Futures was accepted and so was my application to the Nate Welding Program. I am currently a welder at Border at Bowline Logistics and I am happy to share that I also have my Red Seal certification in welding. And I love the trade so much that I want to, I want to pursue a second ticket in heavy duty mechanics. My journey, <clears throat> my journey on the road to get here was not necessarily an easy one. I was in foster care at the, at the age of 11 and I'm thankful to say that I still have the, the same foster family until I turned 18 and they are still my family today. My foster mom, Pat, is here with me and she was my biggest cheerleader as I chased my dreams. She installed confidence in me and regularly encouraged me that I could do this and she also helped care for my son while I attended school so that I could focus on my studies. I wouldn't be where I am today without her and I wouldn't be where I am today without the support of Advancing Futures and my aunt and my caseworker who encouraged me to apply to the program. For any youth or young adults soon aging out of care, I want to tell you that it is okay to dream and that you can do this. I know that as a former child in care that it can impact your self-confidence quite a lot. And when I was a teenager, I felt that because of what I had endured prior to finding my foster family, I wasn't, <clears throat> I wasn't good enough to make it. I wasn't good, <clears throat> sorry. I wasn't, wasn't good enough and that I wouldn't be able to find success in life. And I was, so wrong and I am living proof of that that you can chase your dreams and that whatever your support system looks like whether it is an amazing caseworker Jesus aunts and uncles or an amazing foster parent this new initiative from the government can help you find success in life and find the career of your dreams so that you can focus on the amazing future that lies ahead of you. We don't need to be limited by our past. And if I can do it, so can you. Thank you for having me here today and for allowing me to share some of my story. Amelia, thank you for sharing your, your story. Uh, you truly are an inspiration for so many folks. It is, my also, it is also my pleasure right now to invite uh, Pat Knock, uh, Amelia's mom, to the podium uh, to speak next. Pat? Thank you, Dean. Ben Burford and the introduction. Amelia, you did great. I am so proud of you 
for sharing your story and encouraging others. I am Amelia's foster mom. I have been a foster parent for more than 30 years and have fostered more than 50 children and youth. Thus, fostering has been such a good, rewarding experience for me throughout my life. Many of my foster kids remain in touch with me to this day, stopping by for visits and through Facebook. They are happy to share news of their major milestones with me, like graduating from college or, u or university, getting married and raising families of their own. No, I have played a role in helping them find success in life. It's meaningful to me. I look at them and think I've done good. As my heart swells <clears throat> with pride over their achievements, having fostered so many children over the years, I can speak firsthand to the benefit of the initiative the government has announced today. What government is doing will make a difference for youth and young adults aging out of care who don't have the same connections and advantage as their peers. This program will help guide them through the process of starting careers and trades and help pay for their school, which means one less burden or less hardship for them after they have endured so much already. When Amelia said she was interested in a career of welding, I encouraged her to chase her dreams. I told her I would be in her corner. I would be behind you. I've got your back. You're not doing this alone. When she finished her welding apprenticeship and then went on to get her Red Sea, Red Seal, I was so proud of her. It still makes me cry, as you can see. An initiative like that one the government is announcing today also demonstrates to youth coming out of care that the government is behind them too and wants to help them have a successful future just like Amelia did. Amelia, you did it. I want to say to other youth coming out of care, you can do it too. I believe in you, just like I believed in my own foster daughter. Thank you for having me here today. Thank you, Pat, and thank you for being that inspiration and that, uh, that rock that, that Amelia needed when, uh, when she was going through this journey. On behalf of Nate, I want to express how pleased we are to be part of today's announcement that will help many young adults find success in the skilled trades. Apprenticeship is important to us. Almost 2,000 individuals completed an apprenticeship here at Nate last year. We are proud to be the largest apprenticeship training provider in Canada, but we must grow to meet the demand for skilled trades and technician talent. We have heard from our industry partners that uh, skilled labour, like Amelia, is in high demand, uh, and we need to grow in order to meet that demand. Today's announcement is a strong response to those changes, bringing in more people into apprenticeship education and leading more skilled tradespeople that will help Alberta's economy grow and prosper. But today's announcement is, not, is much more than just about jobs or industries. It is about people. Here at Nate, we talk a lot about meaningful careers, and the emphasis is usually on the career part. People come to Nate to get education they need to get a good job. And that's fantastic and absolutely necessary. But I want to shine a light on the impactful part because today's announcement is so meaningful. A meaningful career is a good paycheck or doing work that, that you enjoy. A meaningful career changes the trajectory of your life. It provides stability, puts food on the table for your kids. It delivers a future that you would not have imagined. But not everyone has access to the education that paves the way to these successful careers. We know that young people leaving care lack the connections and the networks that are necessary to get registered into apprenticeship programs. Providing youth with connections, support, mentorship, 
all the necessary requisites to get them on the path to an apprenticeship will lead them and help them reach their full potential. I want to applaud the work done by Children's Services and the Skilled Trades and Professions Ministries. I hope to see many of the beneficiaries of this initiative in apprenticeship programs here at Nate. I can't wait to see them complete their programs and build those meaningful careers. This concludes the formal portion of today's announcement. I'll now turn the mic over to the Minister's Press Secretary uh, to coordinate the media Q&A. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We'll move on now to media question and answers. Um, we'll start on the floor before moving to the phone lines. We invite media to ask one question, one follow-up, and endeavor to keep the questions on topic, please. Um, the first question. Do we have any questions on the floor today? Yes, the first question is from Lisa Johnson, Edmonton Journal. Hi, thanks for taking my question. This is for the minister. I'm wondering if you can just give me an update on where the TAP program is. The last time I got an update from the ministry, um, financial support, specifically the financial support, were cut off at the age of 22 with a maximum benefit of $1,810 per month. I'm wondering if that has stayed steady or if that has changed with budget 2023-24. Thank you uh, very much for the question. Uh, as you may recall, the TAP program was introduced in 2022. And uh, when we made those, uh, those changes uh, to the age of eligibility and support and assistance ag uh, agreements, we made it clear that we wanted to assess the situation and see how the TAP program best could support our young ad adults transitioning out of care and into childhood. And that's really what we did with this program. We took some of the best uh, parts of the Advancing Futures program, uh, which are the social and the emotional supports, the access to education and funding, employment, coaching, and mentoring that young people need to succeed. And we brought those into one transition into adulthood program. We also expanded those supports to up to 24 years old. And I uh, just wanted to kind of reiterate a little bit about some of the announcement. Budget 2023 also includes our commitment to supporting these youth by investing an additional 5.5 million this year alone, plus 8.5 million in 24, 25, and 11.6 million in 25, 26, for a total of uh, 25.6 million from the uh, Ministry of Children's Services, along with the 2.5 million that we received from uh, skilled trades and professions to uh, support the, um, the, the, the improvement and the continued uh, education of, of young, young adults looking to enter into the career of trades. When we talk about the, um, the TAP program funding, the core maximum benefit is 2% actually higher than the old SAFA monthly benefit of uh, $1,782, so it has gone up. Do you have a follow-up, Lisa? Okay, so yeah, thanks for, thanks for breaking down the budget there. So it sounds like that $1,800 is, is roughly correct because that's the 2% higher than the previous number. The, Am I understanding that correctly? Yes, it would be 2% uh, higher than the uh, original uh, SAFA monthly benefit of $782. Operator? Okay, thanks very much. And do you have an update on how many, how many youth um, are uh, under the, the TAP program right now? Do you have a, a number estimate on that? I do. Okay. TAP currently supports approximately 1,400 youth and young adults. And with the additional 2.5 million from skilled professions and trades, we estimate that an additional 500 youth and young adults will be supported in their trade decisions. Thank you, Lisa. Operator, can you put through the next caller, please? There are no additional callers in the queue. Okay, that wraps up today's announcement. Thank you all for coming and have a good afternoon. Thank you all for being here.